All right, what we have here today is an Alenco signal generator. It's an RF generator. It's the model SG9000. Um, this is a pretty popular de design. Um, you'll see it actually sold under different names. Uh, Leader had an SG17, I think, that's essentially the same model. The placement of some of the front panel components are slightly different, but all in all, the circuitry and frequency range and everything seem to be identical. Um, I've seen it in other units as well, but I uh, can't recall the models right off, off the top of my head. Uh, it covers the ranges of 100 kilohertz up to 150 megahertz, and then has some harmonic frequencies that uh, it's capable of producing up to 450, which are primarily used um, uh, with receivers that can receive up in that range and it's used to help calibrate the unit. Um, it will come with a manual. The manual uh, for the Alenco which contains operating instructions, um, some circuitry theory, uh, it actually has the circuit diagrams and it gives you calibration techniques. And uh, I will provide you a general set of test leads with, uh, they're, they'll be brand new, they're BNC type on one end, and then there'll be uh, gator clips on the others. So you'll have a complete uh, kit ready to go. The unit is in fine physical shape. There are no uh, major scratches of any kind on any of the surfaces. There was a small inscription on the bottom somebody's uh, name, but bottom is rarely seen anyway, uh, right there, actually it was a serial number, so, once again, like I said, it's a, uh, it's a fine looking unit and it works fine, it's a, it's a very nice little um, general purpose RF generator would be great for somebody's bench who's working on, uh, say, shortwave radios and wants to tune IF stages and that sort of thing, or regular radios for that matter, or any any kind of uh, uh, situation where you'd need a, a signal gener generator capable of producing those frequencies between 100 kilohertz and 150 megahertz. We're gonna we've got it set up right now to uh, display both the um, the signal as well as um, the frequency and uh, we're gonna we're gonna track both and and just to uh, to see how our, our vernier tuning oh, by the way this is a uh, a nice vernier tuning dial um, very smooth uh, nice response uh, we have a, a internal modulation external modulation available you can put in the external through these front connectors. We have a high and low attenuator switch and a fine attenuator tuning. Um, and then our band switch off here is A through F. And then a place for a calibration crystal to help you uh, uh, during the time that you might want to calibrate this thing. Uh, which I assure you right now it's in. So let's, uh, let's take a look at it. We are at the moment uh, on the vernier dial. We are dialed on band F at 150 megahertz. This would be the top end. My counter is displaying 154 megahertz. So we are four megahertz off. And just a little nudge on the dial here and we should be able to bring it back. Yeah, there's 150. And uh, if you looked at the vernier, you would actually see a negligible change in the position of this dial. So uh, the vernier is fairly accurate. Um, seems to me to be within 10%. Um, in fact, it's better than 10%. That was, uh, in this case, that was five over 150. So you're better than five, better than probably 3% here. Um, but 
the uh, waveform. Let's take, let me see if we can expand that a little. I guess actually at this rate, I have 150 megahertz scope here. Uh, I can pull this to give me times times 10 magnification. So here we go. We are looking at the magnified waveform. Let me get this light out of our way here. Maybe that'll help. There we go. So this is at our maximum uh, frequency, and then we're going to start dialing down. Let's. Uh, I'm going to hit a couple spots on the dial. Let's go to 100. All right, the dial looks to be reading 100 right about there. And our frequency counter is reading 100.3. And there is our, our waveform. I'm showing you the waveform so you get an idea of the, uh, uh, of the pureness of the, of the generated output. Okay, let's um, go ahead and push in our times 10. And... Uh, We'll take her down to say um, roughly 60 megahertz. Okay. There's 60. Now the um, output is not amplitude controlled, and this uh, generator, like most generators, heat kit, and etc. When there's no uh, no amplitude control on the output, um, the generator is more efficient at other at certain frequencies than others. So you wind up having to adjust the uh, the attenuator to make up for the efficiencies, both positive and negative. So right now uh, at 60 megahertz, we are less efficient than we actually were a few moments ago. You can see the amplitude grow as I was raising it, but. Uh, Anyway, that's 60 megahertz on the vernier, and I'm reading 59.5 megahertz on the frequency. And as you can see, the, uh, the output's looking good, clean. Okay, let's take her down to uh, 40. That looks to be 40 right about there. And I am running 39.9, and um, there's our signal, looking good. Let's uh, go ahead and take her down to the minimum on this range. That would be 100, right about, oh, I'd say right about there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong band, excuse me. This would be... 32 at this end. There we go. 32, and we are reading 32 on the frequency counter. And there is our signal. All right, let's reduce the um, the band to E. This covers 10 megahertz through 35 megahertz. We are going to start at um, at 10, right about there. Frequency-wise, uh, so there's our vernier. Frequency-wise, we are reading 9.85. And um, we'll go ahead and reduce our signal a bit here. There we go. And there's our output. We are running a nice, clean sine wave. I'm going to take my uh, range control down on the horizontal. Let's uh, go ahead and take this now up to... Uh, let's go to mid-band. We'll go to... Uh, say 2, 20. That should be 20 um, megahertz right about there. Yeah, maybe it was off just a hair. Anyway, 19.4 is what the frequency gauge is showing. There's the 20 on the dial. And there is our output. Looking good. Let's go ahead and take ourselves up to the maximum. This would be 35 megahertz. I'm going to guess that that would be right about there, and we are reading 35. 35 on the dial, 35 on the frequency meter. And the 
output. Looking pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and reduce our scale range. Not scale, range is the word. 3 megahertz to 10 megahertz. We are going to start at the 10. Now I'm on band D, which would be this band here. So there would be 10. That looks like 10 to me on the dial. And we are reading 9.89. And um, I'm going to reduce that amplitude a little bit. There we go. And maybe that's just a little too bright. Let's, uh, there we go. So looking clean, let's go ahead and take ourselves from 10 megahertz down to roughly mid-band, which will be about 5. And that looks to be about 5 there, and we're getting 4.91. Our amplitude is high, we're more efficient at this, so we reduce it. Nice clean output. Let's go ahead and take ourselves down to the low end. This would be a 3. Looks to be a 3 there. 2.98 on the uh, 3 on the dial. And we are 2.98 megahertz on the frequency, and there we are with our waveform. And then uh, Go ahead and take ourselves to band C. We're going to start on the low end of the band and raise up on this in this case. Uh, band C covers 1 through 3.2. And um, that is the third band out. So that would be this one here. That looks to be 1 on the dial right there. And we are running... Uh, 997,600, so 998,000 uh, instead of 1 meg megahertz. And there's part of our waveform. We have to reduce our range here so we get a nice look at it. There we go. Looking good. <coughs> Let's take ourselves up to mid-band, which uh, in this case uh, we're going to go about, no, we'll go up to 2. two there on the dial I'm just looking we're getting uh, 1.955 which you know rounded that's two there's our uh, frequency and we'll take ourselves up to the maximum of 3.2 which would be right about there and we are getting uh, 3.26 and our frequency is, our waveform display is looking good. Go ahead and take our cells down again. Band B. Band B covers um, one megacycle down to 300 kilocycles. And that would be one megacycle right about there. We're reading uh, 1.01 .01 megacycles on the uh, counter and the waveform display below. Let's go ahead and take ourselves down to mid-band, which would be about, um, oh, I don't know, we'll say six. Let's take ourselves right about there. Looks to be six on the dial. We're getting uh, five, 583,000 instead of 600,000. Band B, right about there, looks to be 600,000. So again, I'm at 585. And the waveform looks good. Let's take ourselves down to um, 300,000. And this dial would be right down at the bottom end here. I'm going to guess that's it right there. And it's reading 299,008, so 300,000. The waveform is nice and clean. We can reduce our range. Okay, and we're going to go down one more band. We're starting off at the low end of this band. The waveform we have displayed now. 
Uh, we want to go 100 kilocycles to 300 kilocycles. Uh, here would be 100,000 on the innermost dial right there. And we are reading 100,585 and we have that waveform. Go ahead and take ourselves up to approximately mid-band. Uh, we'll make that 200,000. That would be right about there. We're reading 196. And again, our waveform. And then our maximum is 300,000, which would be right about there. And... Uh, All right, I see 300,000 on the dial, and I'm seeing 311,000 on the frequency meter, and that's our waveform. Now, there's overlap on all of these ranges, so if you don't like what you see on any range, you take it up to the next or take it down one, whichever one produces the better signal. I kind of do it like that on purpose. Um, but as you can see, uh, not only did the vernier produce uh, a fairly accurate dial-in of the frequency, um, the waveform looked good uh, throughout the ranges, so... I'm very happy to be able to present this to you. Um, happy uh, bidding, and we'll see you later on.